Barista. So today I'm back with another video from my beach demos and I'm going to be spinning up that art yarn roll log that I spun up in the last video. I'm going to put a link in the description below where you can find that if you want to watch that first where I card up the roll log that I'll be spinning this yarn from. Anyway so today I'm going to be spinning a core spun art yarn and I'm spinning it with weaving in mind. So what I mean by spinning this yarn, this art yarn with weaving in mind, um, is I'm going to be spinning a somewhat thin yarn and, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be consistent in, in thickness on the thin parts, but it's going to have pops of texture with the locks and it will also have texture from some of the other uh, upcycled fibers that I've added to uh, the roll log as I was carding it up. So for this coarse barn yarn, I'm using a looped mohair. Now this is something that I got from the thrift store. And I, I live in North Carolina. There used to be lots of, of textile factories here. So it's not uncommon to find uh, uh, mill ends at our thrift stores. So this mill end in particular is... Uh, is a mohair, a looped mohair yarn. And the reason why this is absolutely perfect for core spawn, spun is A, it's it's relatively thin. So that means that the fiber that I add on top of it um, is not going to make the yarn terribly thick. And I want something somewhat thin um, for weaving because that's going to mean the drape of the fabrics going to be a little more like what I want. I don't want a fabric that's going to be terribly stiff. I want something that's going to be a little flowier that you get when you have a thinner yarn. Also, uh, when you use a wool yarn as a core for core spinning, the fiber is going to grab onto the wool fiber a little better and it's it's not going to be as slippery. You, you can use other other fibers for core spun like cotton or even acrylic it might be a little slipperier than a wool yarn so you notice that I'm spinning in a, a counterclockwise direction and the reason being is I'm right-handed so as the fiber rolls onto onto the core yarn it's going to roll onto it over the top now for me that means that I can see what the outside of the yarn is going to look like and manipulate each fiber that comes into my drafting triangle um, a little easier as it goes over the top of the yarn. Now if I were to spin it in the other direction in a Z twist then what that means is, is since I'm right handed that as the fiber comes into my drafting triangle it's going to go underneath yarn and whatever I'm seeing on the top of the drafting triangle is going to actually be on the inside of the yarn. So that's why I like to do it in the other direction because then I know that whatever I'm manipulating is going to wrap over the top of the yarn. So some basics as far as spinning uh, spinning any art yarn actually um, is as each bit of fiber comes into my drafting triangle I'm going to choose how I'm closing my hand around the fiber or if I'm even going to close my hand around the fiber at all. Now if I close my hand around the fiber it's going to smush it down into the core yarn. It's going to kind of press it into place. But for example if I come across a big juicy lock that I don't I want to be curly and wild against the core yarn I'm basically going to keep my hands off of it because I want that I don't want to press any of that texture into the yarn I want it to be to freely wrap around now what I might do is grab a little bit of the fiber within the lock 
so I can hold it against the core yarn and let it wrap around the core yarn and this is going to secure the ends of that lock. Now this is means that it's not going to be like a free dangling piece of lock. It's going to be a bit of a texture that that kind of presents a pop, a different uh, thickness within the weaving. Now sometimes I might pull that out uh, from my weaving or sometimes I might let that be encased within the warp yarns um, just creating a bump but for the most part what's going to happen when I weave is that it's going to wherever that texture is wherever that lock is is going to create a little bump or texture or a piece of interest um, or a focal point within that fabric so you'll notice that as I'm manipulating each bit of this fiber that's coming into my drafting triangle I'm treadling really slow now if you're looking at this video and you look at the flyer the flyer appears to be moving faster than it it really is and that's part of it is the illusion of of capturing this process on video but if you look at my feet look at how I'm treadling you can see that I'm actually not treadling very fast. I'm treadling rather slowly. It's going to give me a little bit more control over the amount of time that I have to manipulate each piece of fiber as it comes into my drafting triangle. Now for this core spun yarn, you can see that I'm mostly working with the fiber almost exactly perpendicular to the core. And and this is just a personal favor, favorite. It's because I like um, the way that the fiber looks especially the different colors and textures as they hit the core it gives it a more uh, horizontal look um, against the core yarn and I, I just like the look of the way that wraps a little more one of the problems with row logs is that sometimes the fiber um, in the process of, of putting it onto the dowel sometimes that fiber can can come out in a big chunk especially if you're working from one end of the roll log um, against the core yarn you can see here that I had a I came across a big chunk I just stop my spinning all together and take time to to pull that chunk out hand tease it you know to separate those fibers out a little bit more so I'm not working with a big chunky bit of it all at once and there you have it so here is the final yarn um, you can see where some of that uh, loop mohair has poking through the fiber adding just another little interesting texture I really love the way the little loops look here and there scattered throughout the fiber this didn't produce but 18 yards of yarn uh, this is definitely not something I would be knitting with I mean I guess I could add it to some other stuff that are that's similar and use it for knitting um, and I probably would do so on very big chunky needles but again I spun this up with weaving in mind um, little bits of yarn uh, goes a long way in weaving and the type of weaving I do combines lots of yarns all at once I'm not going with just one yarn as a weft um, which this would definitely be weft I well I don't know you know I, I, I guess I could use it core spun a lot of times is sturdy enough to use as warp yarn um, so there are ways that you can um, use even some yarn with some chunky bits as warp yarn um, but my guess is I'll probably use it as weft that's pretty much what I had in mind when I spun this up so there you have it again I will be weaving this up on on uh, my live cast through the patreon uh, otherwise just look for the condensed version of that live cast that I will be editing and posting to YouTube thanks for watching